everybody. <clears throat> we have a game with the black pieces against Tur the Burr, rated 1522 provisional. He opens up with this Queen Gambit esque stuff. We just play um, the Bogo Indian. So we'll go Bishop before check. Uh, he counters with the Bishop and says, No big deal. You got a Bishop, so do I. Um, we don't want to take his Bishop. We want to continue our development so we might as well bring the queen out control the dark squares it can act as a replacement dark square bishop so now he hits the bishop you can see that there's nowhere for it to go the pawns are going to overwhelm it so you have to chuck it white can capture a couple different ways he chooses the knight option um, this means that the knight's not here which means it doesn't support a d5 push as well Okay, so it's my move. What do I want to do? Um, I'm going to castle. Simple. Safe. And so now I gave up my dark square bishop early in the game. So I, I'm, my plan is to put my pawn on d6, e5, create a dark pawn chain since I don't have the bishop, and then open up my light square bishop. So I'm going to start with d6, which helps me play e5. Um, I don't need to play e5 just yet because unless he can stop it, I don't see him being able to stop it just yet because he's just doing simple developing stuff. So I'm going to bring my knight over one square so that when I push e5, he recaptures. Just another piece supporting it. Also, I can swing my knight over to this side. He goes before. What does this threaten? Well, it threatens a pawn storm on the queen side. However, the center is not locked. It's mobile. It's anything can happen. It's unclear. Maybe I can push. Maybe I can take. And so if he's playing on the flank, maybe we can play in the center. We can always push and take away space. That helps lock stuff, but it also gives us space on the king side. And it boots his knight from its most desired square. So although maybe you can open up the position and say these pawn moves are kind of dumb, I'm going to go for this um, transition because his knight can't go back here. If it goes forward, that's kind of risky, I was going to say, because it's loose. I currently don't have a pawn to capture like that. But even this doesn't work because this square is not covered. His knight's almost trapped, though. We don't want to have to move our queen in stuff. Although we don't have this square for our knight just yet. Is it worth playing g6 for a moment? For a moment in time, I think we are going to eventually storm the king side. And I do think that g6 might be useful. In any case, it completely dominates his knight. So his knight's dumb. Really dumb. So we'll just say that. Also, it, it makes his light square control, you know, it's better for us. So he goes f3 saying, if you take, I get a good square for my knight again. We're not going to take. So that's that. We are going to, well, he's weakening his structure a little bit, right? Like the east 3 pawn. So eventually when takes takes, maybe we're going to play on the e file. So I'm going to go rook e8 and prepare the opening of the e file. Prepare this square for my knight or another piece perhaps so white captures opening up his rook all of his pieces basically it's a good thing this is kind of dominated by my pawns so i think that prevents any type of kingside stuff by him so now he has his pawn in the center we're going to take it and keep this blockaded with a beautiful piece ideally we want a knight here but he might take and Put a queen here and get some tempi. Um, the knight's hanging, so not just yet. So here, here, here. Knight back. 
but then this pawn's hanging with check. So now the knight and the pawn are hanging with check. These are the threats. Um, drawback. Ideally, a knight would be nice there. This one, perhaps. My dark squares are tender now that I played g3, g6. So I'm thinking a king g7 is in order. White goes queen b3. Eyeing this diagonal, maybe for a c5, but currently it defends this pawn. Which is really nice, but <laughs> there was a bigger threat on the board. Three, two, one. And I already mentioned it. It's a free knight. And now he's going, oh. He opens up with c5, which attacks f7 with coordination from the rook. So you don't want to act like that's not happening, right? You do want to attend to that. Um, when your queen was here, you had the option of d5, but now you no longer have that option. So instead, if I block with the knight, and he kicks my queen, and I go here, if he kicks my queen, I have the check. So I'm going to go here. Also, maybe I have in-between moves that also that... So I'm, like, I don't think I'm ever worried. Although my knight's always hanging, so suspicious. I also have this move now to close down the queen. But if he kicks my queen trying to get it away from the knight connection, I have to go here, right? And then can he kick it further? I don't really see how other than h4, which loses. Yeah, and then king g7 always supports the dark squares, but I mean, I got have time to play that. So he goes bishop c4, really trying to blast my light squares. But I'm pretty sure this doesn't work. Um, because I can go d5 and shut that down. He takes, I take, he takes. Bishop hits the queen, ruining coordination. He takes a pawn. I mean, do I really not just have a, like a winning position? Do I have anything else? Let's see. If I go here, I mean, let's just do this. I like this. I'm up a knight. I'm up a knight. So if he takes a couple pawns, I can live with that. Do I have a better defense even? Like this, I might not even have to do. So what about, because then it blocks my rook, which is what I don't like about it. This actually defends everything. He doesn't win any pawns, which is kind of nice. But if I, do I have a good move here? I feel like I should, but I don't really see it, so I'm not going to do that move. He's attacking this pawn twice. Rook up is a move. Queen back is a move. Um... I don't know. I guess we can go here, kick the queen with c6, and then put the queen in uh, on e4, and that looks like a good setup for everything. Because once I'm set up, the game's over. Like, it'll just be completely shut down, no counterplay. Right now, he's trying to probe here and here, but um, once I consolidate, he clearly will have nothing. What the heck? A4 is just obviously too slow to try to pawn storm me in this position. Pawn's hanging with check. That's something, but I think I should throw this in, hit the temple with queen, because nothing his queen does can stop this. And if he, he goes somewhere, I'll gladly the queen trade. If he protects it. He does protect it, but now it's a forced queen trade. So this pressure is nullified. Um, he may try to double stack, but I have a bishop here which can plant itself on d5. So now white is done. No counterplay, right? So done. Um, I'm just going to set this whole thing up and then get my other rook in the game. And now there's, you know, without a queen, 
it's really hopeless for white, white's position he wants like a last resort but i was gonna go here anyway because i still want to make room for my rooks he's doing this but if anything this will help me and give him less counterplay because i'll just be dominating more but in this case you can take open up your rook for free so now he's just kind of collapsing because he knows he's losing and this weakness you can't even attack like there's no way to get to it unless you pick up your piece and cheat um, so he goes after the rook that's fair if he gives you this check it doesn't matter at all if he gets behind this pawn he might be able to win it but I mean does it really matter I'm gonna go here which is supported by the bishop and it coordinates here which may f psychologically force him to think he has to trade um, so he attacks this to try to get some counterplay with this pawn I don't see the big deal I guess I could just go back and then he'll go here Oh, he gives me the check, but this only helps me because um, it helps my king go up. You actually could go back. It's perfectly fine. If I defend this way and he takes, and I push the pawn, hitting the rook, and he hits my bit. I mean, this looks kind of unnecessary. Like, I'll just go here. The end. This is not, not a threat, so I'm not sure what that is. And I'll just kind of walk my king in, push my pawns. No big deal. His king can't actually cross the file. Can't really leave the pawns. My king stops his rook from getting behind. Um, he could go back and forth. But with two minutes on my clock, I may hang everything slash stalemate. Because I've done that many times. We all know this. We'll just push our pawns. Um, I'll create a passer, because why not? I'll create an outside pass pawn, because those are the hardest. You know, they, they pull the king the furthest away. Um, I'm going to push it because it's on a light square and now this seems very annoying for my opponent so now I feel like I have the time to do whatever I want with my king um, this is a good move because if I take and he takes that's extremely clever I don't have to take though a lot of people here would panic and think oh my god I just lost the game but you just move your king you're fine um, he can never go after this pawn without sacking his rook so you don't care you just have to make sure he has no funny check that does anything. Um, and you see, this was just a simpler option. You probably could have gone more aggressive, but there's no need. And I can just sneak behind the pawn. And he can't actually protect it except from behind, which is too passive, obviously. So this was a pretty good game by Tur the Burr. He now puts his rook here, but it kind of makes it stuck even more. I'm going to take the free pawn, and then I'll go snatch this one, because why not? He gives me a check, but now you can't defend this pawn. So Yeah, so maybe it was better to go back here, but that ends the game relatively quickly. Um... Yeah, when you're hanging night, the game becomes very hard. But now we're playing a legit 1512 Chuck Rhino 68. He was born in 68. He's quite an older Rhino. And this 1512 blitzes out these moves, but he didn't consider my threat. So I think this pawn is hanging, and that's why you ask, what is the threat? So now he's setting up some type of weird sacrifice funny business. What's the drawback of his move? Well, I could stop it with e6. I could also stop it with d5, which is a tempo move. Very strong. 
it changes our structure but we're happy to do a tempo move like this we're now going to develop our bishop to its most natural square so that if he takes we take with a pin he just castles normal development but I mean we're doing fine here as black right can't complain um, so what do we do we close our pawn chain solidify our center and open up our dark square bishop um, so what does white do white immediately attacks our pawn with c4 he attacks our center what's the drawback the drawback is well one this bishop becomes undefended his idea is if we take he wins the knight but we're obviously not going to take right right none of you were thinking that um, also <clears throat> our last move was e6 which I said develops our bishop he kind of isn't paying attention to that so we're gonna go bishop c5 with check and it's not so much the check because king, he his king wants to go to h1 anyway for safety the thing is it coordinates and we would have had knight f2 check so this diagonal he kind of blundered it so now he's defending with the rook he's he notices the pressure I have he he notices that if he goes to the side I'll have this hitting the queen he'll have to give up his rook but in that line he takes the knight I take the rook I'm up in exchange in this line that he's doing he's just sacking the rook right clearly worse um, and it gets even worse than that because <laughs> when I take this if you take with the bishop it's check he runs away I'm gonna take with the knight and this is gonna hit the queen so the queen's gonna do something then I'm gonna move the knight take the bishop with a check so he's gonna lose everything Because now he hits the queen the queen moves and when I take the bishop he can't recapture because he's in check and the downside of his last move undefends the bishop what is the threat what is the drawback ask yourself the question he moves his king to the side what's the threat nothing what's the drawback it wastes time and helps me give knight checks as well as the bishop was undefended if I go check he's forced to either give up his queen or go back into discovery checks right and if I had a good discovery from here to win his queen I would do it but right now in this position I can take a free piece that comes and hits the queen with tempo so what does he do he moves his queen forward to an aggressive square what is the threat well taking on g7 it puts general pressure on my position but I'm up 12 points of material. I do not care. I do not care. Don't care. So I'm going to take his knight. And he can have my pawn. He takes my pawn. I don't care. I'm going to sack my bishop for no reason. Just to open up his king. Bring it out. Because I'm up so much material. And then because I noticed this alignment. I, I say to myself. I would love to put a rook on g8. I can't put a rook on g8. So a lot of people here say, oh, rook's under attack. Rook f8, obviously still winning, but king d7, connecting this, threatening rook g8. So now when he takes this pawn with check, you block with the queen. If he queen trades, you're up 11 points of material. If he doesn't queen trade, you now have your pieces active on the g-file. King d7, good move. So he doesn't want the queen trade because he's clearly losing. With no calculation, the most natural move, bringing the rook in with check. Okay, good. Now, I notice his king is here, and there's a correlation between the knight squares. Oops, the knight squares. They defend each other's squares. So, like, if I get a knight here and he has one here, they touch. So because his king is here, I know that I can develop and get a check in once I reach that square so he develops his knight what's the threat to capture our knight understood um, we could definitely save the knight but do we have to that's the question 
Uh, I'm gonna just forget about it um, and give him this check to bring more pieces in the center. Uh, he brings his queen, his king over here. Do I have any cool stuff? Well, I do have this double check. It's a double check and a fork. So his king moves. There's a free rook. Before I take the rook, do I have any check possible checkmates? Let's see. If I go here, that's a check. Right? So his king, if you draw this, you can see that his king has zero squares in this position. So if you were to give it a check, that could be bad for him. This check, he can't go anywhere here. It looks like checkmate in one. So always double check before you just grab the rook. Checkmate in one. Draw the lines if you need to to help you see. But always take a second if you have five minutes like I do. Might as well. It ends the game quicker and makes for a shorter YouTube video for you guys. Um, which would mean you don't like the video. But anyway, <laughs> submit your rapid videos. Good luck in your climb, guys. Goodbye.